Doing his part on offense, rookie running back Chris Johnson, who's rushed for 202 yards on 34 carries. That is third among the rookie backs behind Matt Forte and Darren McFadden. And Chris joins us now on First Take to talk about it all. Chris, rookie season, and, and then you have this drama that I mentioned that unfolds surrounding your quarterback, Vince Young. What was your reaction when you heard about the police looking for him and some of the other stories that followed? Oh, well, my reaction was basically um, knowing the type of guy that Vince Young is, um, that it really wasn't nothing as serious as what it was cracked out to be. You know what I'm saying? He, um, I guess he got bullied by the crowd and he didn't have a, a good game or whatever. So he just really wanted to stay to himself and everybody was calling his phone. He didn't really want to talk to nobody. So he just wanted to watch, game, watch the game in peace. Well, I mentioned that now you guys move on with Kerry Collins as your quarterback. You've, you've got a game with him there now. How are things different between having Kerry as your quarterback and when you had Vince? Um, what is really different is uh, with Vince back there, he's a running threat back there. And with uh, Kerry back there, he's more of a drop back passer. So most teams, they probably take sit and cover two. So that will leave me more one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker. But with when Vince is back there, it's more like a spy on Vince. So it, it's kind of different. But you know what I'm saying we still just got to go out there and and, um, and play the game and try and get our wins. Man. And you're certainly getting the wins. You're doing your part. I mentioned the numbers: 202 yards, 34 carries in two games. How have you managed to adjust to the NFL so quickly? Um, just by going out there and practicing every day hard like it's a game. So try and make practice harder than what the game is. So when I go out there on the field, just do all my reads and, and hopefully I can continue to have good games every week. Biggest difference that you've noticed between college football and now pro football? That everybody out there on the field is fast. Everybody real fast out there, so you really can't have as much time to do everything you want to do. You just Once you see the hole, you got to hit it. Well, I got to ask you one more college football question. You're an East Carolina guy, and your team has certainly been one of the surprises so far this season. How much bragging have you been able to do now in that locker room because of your club? Well, I've been doing a whole bunch of bragging <laughs> in the locker room. You know People, they they want us to, they want us to lose. You know, they always got haters out there, but I keep telling everybody that we're gonna go undefeated this year. Well, I'm sure you would take undefeated seasons on both fronts, on your Titans team and on the Pirates as well. Chris, good luck the rest of the way. Thanks for joining us. Okay, thanks. ECU is the early Cinderella storyline. How have the Pirates dealt with the pressure so far? Well, it was interesting to just hear Chris Johnson say that they're going undefeated. Nothing like putting a little pressure on your uh, <laughs> former teammates. You know, it was interesting, Jay. The first two weeks of the season, they were the Hunters, knocking off Virginia Tech and then West Virginia. This past weekend, they were the Hunted. They played against Tulane, and for the first time, they were favored. They really struggled in that game, came away with a 28-24 win. I asked Patrick Pickney, the quarterback there, what's it like learning to handle success? They have to remember, this is a guy who got there and basically sat for a couple of years. He was third or fourth on the depth chart going into spring last year before winning the job. And, you know, he was recruited by about six ACC schools, but they all wanted him to play defensive back. He wanted to play quarterback. East Carolina was the only school that would give him a shot. The other day, he was out to dinner with one of his close friends and his son, Isaac, who's three and a half. Well, Isaac started making goo-goo eyes at a little girl sitting at the table next to them. <laughs> Turns out they were big East Carolina fans, so the parents said, can you take a picture with our daughter? He said, of course I will. When they said, okay, everybody say cheese, the little girl said, go Pirates. So <laughs> they're learning pretty quickly down there that it's really tough to be the only show in town. And he's going to join us on the program tomorrow to talk about that early success. Here to talk all things Jacksonville is their quarterback, David Garrard. David, that 0-2 record uh, maybe gets put into some perspective, sadly, by the shooting of your teammate, Richard Collier. How's he doing right now? Well, we haven't had a whole lot of reports on it. Uh, his family's really keeping everything tight and kind of in-house. Uh, we've really been praying for him as much as possible. Uh, we, we've, the last thing we've heard that he's in stable but still critical condition. So, uh, you know, our thoughts and prayers are definitely going out to him. He's, uh, you know, he's part of our, our football family, and, you know, we wish we could have more information on it. And what impact has that had on the team, not having a lot of information and even just his shooting? Well, you know, it's, uh, it's very troubling because, you know, 
it was a guy who was, you know, not in like a, a bad place or, you know, with the wrong crowd or anything. But, you know, he was, I don't know if he was targeted or what, but, you know, just to be shot up for no reason, didn't take anything, uh, you know, it's just, it's real troubling to the rest of the guys because you just never know, you know, where you can go or what you can do. And so a lot of guys are just staying home nowadays. And you do have to go out and play football, though, despite all of that. And I mentioned that record, which I know you wish was a better record. How much concern is there in your locker room right now about that 0-2 start? Well, you know, it's, uh, it's very troubling that, you know, we have uh, kind of stumbled out. We've had uh, a number of injuries. We've had, you know, guys not being able to play. But, you know, we have nobody to blame but ourselves. Nobody's going to feel bad for us. So we've really got to band together as a team, uh, offensively, defensively, special teams, everybody. Everybody has to play at another level. And uh, that only way to do that is to go out this week, uh, prepare as hard as possible, and, and hopefully do enough, do everything you can to scratch claw to get a win you know, this weekend. And Drayton Florence, your teammate, says that the swagger's not gone, which you'd see as a positive sign. So how do you turn that swagger into a victory against Indy this weekend? Yeah, well, the swagger is definitely not gone. You know, uh, we've, we've been so close in both of these games. I think that the, the team is definitely starting to uh, gel a little bit more. Um, and, you know, once we get some of our, our key guys back, like Jerry Porter, you know, and Troy Williamson back, that will just add to our, our weapons on offense. So, you know, hopefully they will be, uh, you know, a good factor for us this weekend. And, and I thank my offensive line being able to have had one game together, you know, with, you know, a number of guys that are new. And uh, hopefully this weekend they'll be able to put it all together and we'll be able to play as a cohesive group. Yeah, that's been a huge difference for you. And I, I feel like I'm piling on, but, but have to point out that, you know, last year you were the model of efficiency in the NFL. Just three interceptions and this year already three picks that you've thrown. Is it just the line or is there something else to that? No, uh, you know, I thought the line did a, a great job last week. Uh, unfortunately, I had a ball that was tipped and, and it came out you know, like a wounded duck right into the defensive guy's hands. And, you know, those are things that they weren't really happening to me last year. But like I was telling everybody last year that, you know, these things happen. Those kind of uh, intercept interceptions happen. And, and it, it didn't show up like that last season early on. And, you know, so I don't get down when interceptions happen. They happen to all quarterbacks. You know, you, just, you never think you're going to go into a season and throw three interceptions. So, uh, you know, I'm not down about that. I just want to make sure that I get the, uh, the, the touchdown uh, ratio up so that that, you know, overweighs the uh, interceptions. If you do have one area where you can brag right now, it's certainly your college team. East Carolina, one of the surprises so far this season, looking to go 4-0 uh, for the first time in nine years. Is this a team that's going to sneak into a BCS game this year? You know, I really hope so. We've... Uh, it's been a, a number of years where I haven't been able to come into the locker room and really say very much. <laughs> but uh, nowadays, I can walk with my chest out a little bit, you know, and uh, talk a little trash to some of the guys in there. And uh, it, it really does feel good. I've been uh, texting uh, Skip throughout the season, you know, telling him what a great job he's doing with the team. And, you know, I just hope they can continue this. I know they play a little bit lesser competitions now. But uh, that's when they got to pull together the most because uh, when you play with, when there's only 12,000, people in the stands that's when you know guys like to take plays off and uh, you let these teams that are maybe not as good as you sneak up on you so uh, they got to really stay together and uh, continue to just play you know pirate football that's how we do it and give you bragging rights there before we let you go what are you doing to help raise awareness about Crohn's disease well you know I've really teamed up with uh, Cinecor and the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation of America we've started a program called in the zone for Crohn's uh, basically, every touchdown that I score this year, uh, Cinecor is going to donate $10,000 to the uh, Crohn's and Colitis Foundation of America to be able to raise awareness, raise money, uh, you know, raise uh, research for this disease that, you know, is really affecting a lot of people. And a uh, great place to, to track that is at Crohn'sInTheZone.com so you can see how I'm doing, see how much money I'm raising. And, you know, I've kind of gotten up to a slow start, but I plan on turning it up a little bit so that we can get the uh, dollar bills going up. Well, David, I, as you said, I know it's been a slow start, and I, I, I wish you luck the rest of the way. Hopefully we can talk to you in a few weeks as things are looking up for you and the team. Thank you. Thank you. I hope so, too.